Hey guys, Casey Ferris here. Thanks for checking out another video of mine here on YouTube. Today we are continuing our series on just kind of some basic videos on Resolve 15. It's a bunch of videos that are geared towards somebody who might be thinking about switching over to Resolve as their main editor. Maybe somebody who is familiar with other programs and is just trying Resolve out. And the point is to attack some of the most intimidating things about Resolve and walk through them together. Today, we are tackling the subject of nodes inside of Fusion. This is the part of Resolve that I get the most comments on saying, oh, I don't really know how this works. I'm intimidated by it. And it's kind of a huge barrier for people wanting to work inside of Fusion. And the thing is, nodes can be really intimidating until you get to know them. They're actually pretty simple. It's just a slightly different way of working than you might be used to. Basically, long story short, each node inside of Fusion is a single instruction. This can be something like importing footage, changing a property, adjusting colors, adding a mask, putting something over something else. When you composite in Fusion, instead of stacking a bunch of layers, you're basically kind of building a set of instructions for Fusion to follow. It's a little bit like a recipe. How is that, you might ask? Let's jump in. Here is a basic little drawing of what the node structure might look like for the treatment of a interview shot. If you're already lost, let's switch this out for something a little bit more fun. A peanut butter and jelly sandwich. These are the exact same kind of nodes, but for a peanut butter jelly sandwich instead of the interview. You know that any time that you build a sandwich, you start with some bread. That's this node right here. Let's say we want to toast the bread. The first step is get some bread. The second step is toast it. Then we're gonna spread something on it. What are we gonna spread on it? Well, up here we have peanut butter and jelly. We're gonna mix those together and spread them on the bread. Next, we're gonna finish off our sandwich with something. What is it? Oh, well, it's another piece of bread that's been toasted. You put that on top and then all of that goes into your mouth because that's what you eat. My name is Casey Ferris. I will catch you. I'm just kidding. It looks super scary and it looks complicated, right? But every single thing that you do to build that sandwich is one step. And each step is a node. We have our ingredients, two pieces of bread. Each one is toasted and put together somewhere along the line. Toast some bread, spread a mix of peanut butter and jelly on it, put some bread on top of it, put it in your mouth. And that's really all that nodes are. Each node is a step in the recipe. Let's, uh, Take this a little further. Here I have the actual nodes for a digital peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And even though the nodes look a little different in real life, each one is a step in the process. But before we get into it, let's take a look at how we would build this with layers. Here I am in After Effects and have my layers laid out here and I have my sandwich, bread, jelly, peanut butter, bread. And if I solo each layer, you can see what's going on. First, I have my bread. On top of that, I have my jelly. On top of that, I have my peanut butter. And on top of that, I have my bread. Each bread layer, if I bring up my effect controls, we can see we have a color balance effect on this where if I turn it off and on, we'll see how it's affecting that bread. It's kind of a digital way to toast things. Digital toast, digital toast. So simple enough, four layers. Each bread layer has an effect to darken it, make it seem like it's toasted, sandwich is done. Let's take a look at this same type of comp inside of Fusion. And at first glance, it looks like there's a freaking ton more stuff going on here. But the reality is we're doing the exact same thing. We're starting out with a black background. What I'm gonna do is select each node and hit one on my keyboard to load it into this left viewer. And our final comp will be in the right viewer, which is showing our media out node. This media out node is what the person watching my project is going to see. All of this stuff is just the building blocks. So we're starting out with a black background. Then we're going to bring in some bread. Here's our bread. Now we want to toast the bread. I have a node here, which is a color corrector. If I load that, we see it toasts the bread. Then we have a node here called merge. A merge node is just a node that puts something over something else. If you're working in layers, whatever is on top of something else in the layer stack is on top of it in the comp. With nodes, because you're kind of just building instructions, you have to tell it to put something over something else. So all we're doing so far is putting this piece of bread over our black background. Next, we have our jelly. I'm gonna select our jelly node and hit one to load it into this left viewer. There's our jelly. And in this node, we're telling it to Put the jelly over the toasted bread and the black background. Next comes the peanut butter, which we select the PB node. There's the peanut butter. This merge node is telling it to put that peanut butter over the jelly, the toasted bread, and the black background. 
Same thing with our last piece of bread, which looks like this. We wanna toast it and then put it over everything else. There's our sandwich. The main difference, if you're familiar with layers, is that layers are stacked up like this and wherever they are in that layer stack determines what happens with them. Nodes are just instructions that are linked together. And every major thing that you do, including putting something over something else, needs an instruction. Now, you may be saying to yourself, why so much work? What is the advantage to this? First answer, for something simple like this, it does seem like a lot more work than is necessary. But once you start building graphics and composites that are a little bit more complex, that have more than just a few elements, it's really nice to be able to look at your node graph and see exactly what's going on with every single piece of your project. We can even start to see how that's useful here in this simple little comp. If we were to just look at this, we could pretty much tell what's going on. Let's just zoom into our nodes. First of all, we start with a background. If we were to look up at our inspector, we could see that our background color is black. So we're starting with a black background. Then there's a connector coming out of it. It's coming out of the little gray square, which is the node's output. So. Whatever this node looks like, you can grab this little gray square and connect it to whatever comes next. In this case, it's coming into a merge. Now the merge node puts something over something else. And you may be wondering, how does it decide? How does that work? Well, whatever's connected to the yellow arrow right here, that's gonna be the background. That's always the background of a merge node. Whatever's connected to the green arrow, that's always the foreground of a merge node. Now how it puts things together, how it sizes it, the opacity, and a bunch of other fancy stuff is controlled in the inspector. If we go up here, we'll see there's a bunch of properties for this merge node. That controls the size and the position, the rotation, and a bunch of other things about how one node is put over the other. So if I were to adjust this size, we see that our bread gets sized up and down. So let's go up a little bit and see what's being connected to this foreground. Up here, we have something called toaster, and above that, we have something called bread. Bread is just our PNG file. If I load it into the left viewer, this is what it is. Now, the output from this is being connected to another yellow arrow. That's going into this node that's called toaster. Now, I've renamed this node, but what it is, if we mouse over it, is a color corrector node. So what that's doing is changing the colors of whatever comes into this input, and then it's outputting that color corrected image. So if we were to press number one on the keyboard and then move up to our viewer, this is what Toaster is doing. And the output from Toaster is being put into the foreground of our merge node. So we can tell just by these couple nodes that there's a black background and that our bread is being color corrected and then put in the foreground in front of our black background. Now, you may be asking me, what the heck is this blue arrow for? What's that about? That's confusing. Anything that's connected to a blue arrow is an effect mask. That's like its alpha channel, its transparency. All I'm doing is telling this effect to only affect pixels that exist in this image. And it doesn't do that by default. If I click on one of these connectors, I can disconnect them and I can grab my output from my bread and just connect that into that blue arrow and that'll connect it to the effect mask. That brings us to the first really cool thing about nodes. You can use the output of a node to affect basically any other node in a variety of different ways. Not only can you send image information from one node to another, you can use any node to mask something else using that node's transparency, which is really cool because you don't need to go through properties and set it as a mat or a mask or anything like that. You just connect it. Another thing that really trips people up, if I disconnect this, you can see that this arrow isn't blue anymore, it's white. In fact, there's four arrows coming into this effect. A green arrow, a yellow arrow, a white arrow, and a blue arrow. And so it gets really confusing because you're like, which one do I connect it to again? How does that work? Why is this? The good news is that if you mouse over any of these arrows, it'll tell you what it is. Okay, so this is a match reference, all right? That's something I'm not really interested in right now. This is the input, okay. So that's something I can connect an output to, that makes sense. White is a match mask. Again, something maybe not that interested in, but the blue is the effect mask. Yes, that's the one I want. I can grab my output from my bread and put it into the effect mask. Now, you'll see that this arrow just moved. The blue arrow's up here and the white arrow's up here. These arrows can move around this node pretty much wherever they want. Check this out. If I were to move this around, you see, look at the arrows just getting crazy. Just doing whatever they please. You should pretty much just let go of the thought that an arrow is going to be in a specific place. 
It doesn't matter where the arrows are on the node. It doesn't actually matter where the nodes are on the graph. All that matters is what each output and input is connected to. So let's load up this merge four in our viewer and we have our black background with our toasted bread. So now we're taking the output from that, all of that together, and we're doing something with it. We're gonna merge it with something, okay? That's gonna be the background of our merge. The foreground is going to be something called jelly, which again, if we load up in our viewer, is this jelly PNG. So we're putting the jelly in the foreground over our toasted bread, which is over our background. If I grab this merge node and hit one to load it up in the left-hand viewer, there we have our jelly over our bread. And you can see how things get maybe a little easier to understand once you've gone through the basics. Now we're doing pretty much the exact same thing. We're taking all of this and we're putting something in the foreground over it. The thing that we're putting over is this peanut butter. I'll hit one on my keyboard. This is what we're putting in the foreground. If I select my merge and hit one, this is what that composite looks like. And for this last merge node, you can see this is pretty much the exact same thing as this. We're just taking some bread, toasting it, and then putting it in the foreground over everything we've built so far. And it ends up looking like what we have here in our viewer. This is where things get really cool because as we looked at before, you can take a node and drag its output to any number of things. You can use it in multiple ways. So we can actually save a little bit of time and resources by outputting the same node to multiple other nodes. Check this out. Like we said earlier, this is pretty much the same thing as this. And actually it's the exact same image. This is just a duplicate of this. So what I can do is just select all of this and hit backspace and get rid of it. And I'll move this over here, grab my output from my toaster node, and just drag that onto the foreground of merge three. And then look up in our viewer. It's the exact same result. Do some cleanup here. And now I have a little bit simpler node graph. And if I wanna change something, I only have to change one node to affect multiple different things in the composite. Again, this is something that isn't that big of a deal with a really simple comp like this. But once you get into even a dozen or more nodes, this can be really, really powerful. Let's say I want to toast my bread more. I can select my toaster node, go over to my inspector, bring down this gamma a little bit, and it will affect both of these elements at the same time. Super powerful. The other great thing about working with nodes is that you can see everything that's going on in your comp at a glance. It takes me about two seconds to pinpoint exactly what I need to change if I want to adjust the way my comp looks. But let's take a look at trying to do that with layers. So I'm back in After Effects and I want to change the way this bread looks. If I were to look at my layer stack here, I can see that there's bread, jelly, peanut butter, and bread, but I have no idea what else is happening right now. Just looking at these, as far as I know, these layers haven't been changed at all. It's not until I twirl down one of these layers that I start to see, oh, there's effects on this layer. Oh, it's color balance and brightness and contrast. Oh, what's going on with that? And then of course I can open up things and change them. But if I wasn't the one who did this, I wouldn't necessarily know to look for a toast effect. I would just assume that that's kind of how the bread looks. Over here in the nodes, I say, okay, we got our bread and what's this? Oh, it's a color corrector. This way I have immediate information about what's going on with every single element of my composite. This is especially useful if you have to go back to maybe an older project and fix something later. Also, let's try that fancy like duplicate the bread and change them both at once thing with layers. One thing I could do is pre-comp my bread and move all attributes to the new comp. Grab that, delete my bread layer here, duplicate this and bring a layer up top and then move this over. And then if I want to adjust them both, double click, grab my bread layer and I can adjust things here and then switch back to my original comp and they'll both be adjusted. That's not a terrible way to work, except for I had to do a lot of that work again. I had to not only make the comp, but duplicate it and put it on top of my other layers, reposition it, and then I still had to double click into the comp, open it up, twirl down the effects, change them, and then switch back to my original comp. Same thing in Fusion is delete, reconnect. So even though there are a ton of different kinds of nodes inside of Fusion, different effects, different tools and everything, they all connect in very similar ways. If you grab an effect that you just have never used before, it'll most likely have an input and an output 
and maybe some other specialized inputs, which you can always mouse over and learn about, look them up. And so you're not left high and dry. The very last thing that I want to talk about with uh, using fusion nodes is this idea that at least I had in my mind that they're so much slower to use than layers. Like just to put something over something else, you have to make a merge node and you have to connect the foreground and the background when in layers, you just put a layer over another layer. It seems like a lot of work for no reason. But the truth is once you learn a couple of tricks working with nodes in fusion, you can put together a comp just as fast. Check this out. So what I'm going to do is delete pretty much all of my nodes except for my background node. And we're going to build this thing from scratch. I'm going to grab each element from my media pool and just drag it down as a node. I'm going to hit F2 to rename them. This one's jelly. This one's peanut butter. And this one's bread. So we're going to start with our bread and we're going to merge it over our background. Instead of adding a merge node, I'm just going to drag the output of this over the output of my background node and watch what happens. Boom. It makes a merge node sets so my bread as the foreground and my background as the background. I can do the same thing with my peanut butter, drag the output from my peanut butter node onto the output of my merge node. There we go. And same for my jelly, drag the output of my jelly all the way onto my merge. Now we're going to change the sizing of these. You can do that inside of the merge node. I'm going to grab this merge three, go up to my inspector and bring the size down for my jelly. I'm going to grab merge two, bring the size down for my peanut butter and go to merge one, bring the size down for my bread. I'm gonna grab right on the screen, move my bread over, grab my merge two, move my peanut butter over, grab my merge three, move the jelly over, maybe that should be a little bigger, size that up. Now we need to toast our bread. I'm gonna go up here to my toolbar and grab a color corrector node and drag that in. Now I could break this connection, move my bread up, grab my output of my bread, connect it to my color corrector, grab the output of my color corrector and connect it to the merge. But that's a lot of work. So instead, what I'm going to do is just grab my color corrector, hold shift and drag it down over my arrow between my bread and my merge until it turns blue and let go. Then it will automatically put that in between my bread and my merge. I'm going to click my color corrector node and go up to my inspector. And let's bring our gamma down to toast the bread. I'm also going to go back to my nodes, grab the bread output and connect it to the effect mask of color corrector one. That ensures that all this color correction I'm only doing to the bread and not to the whole image. I'm going to grab both these nodes, drag them to the middle, and grab the same output and just drag that output from my color corrector one, my toasted bread, drag it over the output of my last merge. And what that's going to do is add another piece of bread on top of my sandwich. I can select my merge, go over to my inspector, and adjust the size and position of my bread. And now we have our sandwich built again pretty darn quickly and everything that we've done is displayed in this convenient graph. So there you go. That's a crash course on nodes inside of the Fusion page inside of DaVinci Resolve 15. For anybody who's used to compositing inside of After Effects or Photoshop or anything that uses layers, I hope that this made things a little less intimidating. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. If you like this, hit like. And for more post-production tutorials, videos on DaVinci Resolve, things like that, make sure to hit that subscribe button on my channel here on YouTube. My name again is Casey Ferris. I will catch you next time.